I'm going to focus on a word today, and as soon as I say it, you're going to begin shaking your head, thinking, oh man, can I call, recall many, many times where I've had to face this? It's the word absurdity. How many times have you tried to deal with someone who has a real high need for control, and they have this sense of entitlement, etc., and some of the reasoning they can come up with just leaves you scratching your head thinking, where did they come up with that? How do they reason that way? I, I'm going to give you some examples. And uh, and, and by the way, I, I'm using these examples with permission. Um, one lady was telling me that she was going to the grocery store. She speaks to her husband and says, is there anything you'd like for me to get? And he says, well, make sure you get a jar of peanut butter. And her comment was, well, Last time I went to the store, I got, I got you a jar of peanut butter. It's sitting in the pantry. Now, the husband's response was, I can't stand the way that you're constantly correcting me and you're constantly putting me down. You're just going to have to quit it. And, and I'm listening. It's like, did he really say that to you? And she says, he does it all the time. That's the way he talks to me. That's the way he reasons. I can't reason with him whatsoever. That's absurd. Or another man uh, came into my office and he said that he had uh, he and his wife were in some place standing in public, and she looked at him and said, "I always wish that I could have married someone taller." And he's kind of looking at himself, saying, "Well, I didn't hide it from you. And it's not like he was just uh, this little bitty small guy, and she was just super uh, tall woman, or that all this disparity, as if that would really matter." But it's like, well. And he, and he asked, well, what'd you have in mind? She said, oh, about six foot four. He's like five foot 10. And it's like, well, I can't do anything about it. It's like, yeah, I know. And, and this man is talking with me. And it's like, what do you do when you're criticized for something like that? That's absurd. Or people at the place of business. It could be that they're praised for doing something one day and, and uh, you're going through a project. And then the next day, that same person comes along and says, why are you doing it like this? And you say, well, remember we talked about this yesterday and I'm kind of following through with what you told me. So I didn't say anything like that. And then that individual can come to me and, they, and they'll say, I get that kind of circular communication constantly and, and so on and so forth. Have you ever been involved with people who have such absurd reasoning that it's like, there's no way that I can get through to these individuals? And then in addition to this absurdity, you realize that these individuals seem to have a commitment to exaggerated anger. Uh, the way I put it is they'll spend $20 on five, five cents worth of frustration. They, they just can, uh, they can go on and on about things that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Their reasoning can be completely illogical. And then they can have a gross in, uh, a gross defensiveness when you try to talk with them. Uh, this one uh, woman came and told me that she had a member in her extended family. And, uh, his comment was if she disagreed with him later on, he'll, uh, he would say, you know, earlier today, you know, when you went off on me and she'll say, I don't go off on people. Uh, and it's like, no, you went off on me. You were just like a bottle rocket. And her comment is, what do you do? How do you communicate with somebody who has a view of who you are and a view of the way the world works? that just absolutely makes no sense. Now, I've picked up on six different characteristics or ingredients that are a part of this absurd approach to life where you, uh, that individual's uh, way of reasoning lacks any kind of meaning or, uh, or, or good common sense. And I want you to see if these six ingredients would fit with some of the people that you have to live with. Now, first, absurd people take no counsel or input from anyone. It's like when you try to talk with them and say, well, here's the way I look at things. It's like, yeah, that's my problem. Here's how you look at things. And, and it's just like they, they take counsel from only themselves. And when they're in that kind of almost out of touch with reality kind of uh, way, uh, way of life, it's like, how do you get through to these people? You don't. Uh, there, there's no sense of that interconnectedness. Uh, number two, correctness is whatever they say it is in the moment. Yesterday, it may have been that A was the, the, the gospel truth. Today, the exact same thing as B. It's something entirely different. You, you never quite know where these people are. It's like, as you're trying to understand them, it's, trying to like, it's like trying to hit a moving target. You don't know uh, what's going on because correctness just changes upon, based upon the whims of that absurd person. 
Or this number three, and this is a big one. I'm sure that you've run across this and it's created your own futility. And that is the more you press into their absurdity, they can double down on their illogical reasoning. You may say, no, when you said this, that was completely wrong. And the absurd person can, can come back and say, not only is it not wrong, but here's four other kind of things you need to understand. And it, it can all be completely illogical. And I've, I've talked with people who have gotten into arguments and discussions with these individuals and the absurd individual can just go on and on and on and just make up stuff as they go along. It's like, this is the gift that keeps on giving. They won't quit. And then number four, and this is a kind of an interesting fusion. Absurd people have a fusion of entitlement and superiority. Now, the superiority it comes kind of easily when they continually re, uh, invalidate you and reject you. Uh, the entitlement is more of a, a mindset that says, look, there's a certain way that you're supposed to think toward me. You're supposed to see me as being the ultimate determiner of what's correct and incorrect and proper, and you're not doing it correctly. So entitlement and superiority fused into one. Number five, absurd people can't laugh at themselves. Uh, they certainly can't take a joke and they certainly can't say, you got me on that one. Uh, they won't do that. Uh, the the uh, absurd people, and this is interesting, tend to have what I refer to as a shame-based way of thinking. And by that, I mean, it's like if they have to admit wrong or if they have to say that, you know, maybe their style doesn't match with someone else, they can't do that because admitting mistakes or acknowledging that they may be off base uh, brings great shame upon them and great guilt and insecurity. And it's like, no, I, I, I've had enough of that in my lifetime. So they just sidestep all of it um, because they're, they're unable to, to just say, you know, I'm human just like everyone else. And then number six, absurd people have lost their sense of us. It's not about one person's interpretation when we engage with each other. There, there's a team mentality that we can go with. And even if we don't think alike, we can still accommodate one another's thoughts and opinions and perceptions. That's a notion that's completely lost with people who are in the world of absurdity. So are you going to respond when you engage with these kinds of individuals? And my first point that I'm going to make here is going to shock no one. And that is, uh, hold on to the notion. You can't reason with an unreasonable person. And so uh, don't enter into their space of illogic. The more you try to argue, the more you try to prove your point or uh, show them the error of their ways, like I mentioned a minute ago, they, they tend to double down. Uh, you can't reason with those individuals. Now, number two, we want to say, drop any worry that you're going to be rejected by that absurd person. You know, part of the problem is the, the absurd individual is more or less implying to you, I think you're an idiot or you don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, no, you can't say that about me. Well, yes, they can. In fact, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. They don't think well of you. Okay. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't scare me. It doesn't uh, cause me to tremble. Uh, there you are, and if you reject me, so be it. I'm being rejected by an absurd person. So this leads to another thought, and that is, go your own way. <laughs> Maybe we can come up with that song. You can go your own way. We'll, we'll do the Fleetwood Mac mentality on, on these individuals. Move, move away from that kind of mentality. Uh, you need to kind of uh, make yourself separate and other, sorry about that. You know, my wife is a trained musician. She's trained in opera. When I start singing, she just rolls her eyes at me. Uh, maybe that's absurd. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, you, you, you want to interconnect with individuals, but sometimes these are individuals that you just have to walk away from and say, uh, there's nothing there. And I'm not going to try to connect with a big bucket full of nothing. Uh, it's nice for you to want to connect. Uh, but then that leads us to an, a final thought. And that is, as you connect, make sure that you interact with individuals who have re good reasoning and they know how to do relationships well. So the next time that you are uh, up against that absurd kind of thinking, you're being told that you don't know what you're talking about and, and you, you're just in the world of their crazy making, um, you may be too short, you may be too tall, 
you may uh, may not have gotten the peanut butter uh, message uh, that you're deemed to be unworthy. Why don't we just say this? In your mind, you can think of that about that absurd person. Your your opinion of me is under further review, or maybe not. And in the meantime, I have a life to share with reasonable people. Let's go in that direction. Now, I do hope that you gain benefit from videos such as this. And if you've not done so, go below and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't already uh, found us on, on the web, on the uh, World Wide Web, we have a, a, a website, survivingnarcissism.tv. And you'll find all sorts of articles and videos and and uh, items of interest there, quizzes, things like that. It's meant to be an augmentation of what we're doing here. Check it out. I think you're going to really like it. If you'd like to unpack some of your emotional and relational issues with individuals online, and in these days, a lot of people are going online for help such as that, and I get it. Uh, I think it's a good idea. We have a link below that will uh, help you find uh, people that can assist you there. If you also want to have some online at-home testing for hormonal imbalances, Due to the stress that you, you uh, are under dealing with these individuals, we have links for that. We also have my online workshops, video workshops, my books, and even coffee mugs. Now, let's get away from the world of absurd. Let's uh, see if we can approach one another with a certain amount of reason. And in doing so, I hope that you can decide that if other individuals want you to go into their world of crazy, uh, why don't we just say no thanks I'm staying over here on Team Healthy.